Good afternoon. Welcome to today's broadcast, LinkedIn Profile and Networking Hacks. My name is John Link, and I am the director of Webster University's Career Planning and Development Center located in St. Louis, Missouri. And I'm very happy that you're able to spend part of your day with me and, and um, some other attendees who are joining us from all over the United States and abroad. So welcome to today's session. We are going to have another session in April about developing a LinkedIn profile summary and really doing a deep dive into optimizing some of the beginning sections of your LinkedIn profile, especially if you're job seeking and you're looking at using your LinkedIn profile as a means to network your way into positions or as a way for you to build your personal brand, extend that personal brand a little bit further. I am including a web link um, of today's presentation in the chat box. You'll be able to access this presentation as there are some clickable links that you'll be able to um, reference uh, and view some additional resources that are included in the Career Planning and Development Center's e-resources section of, of our website. And you can click all of those and look at additional ways to really strengthen your overall digital footprint, not even just focusing on LinkedIn, but other digital portfolios that you may currently be auditing and seeing where you would want to put some additional energy into um, creating an updated presence, um, working more intentionally to present information artifacts that reinforce your essential um, skills and qualifications and overall value for anything that you're currently seeking. One um, thing that I really just want to reinforce is that when we look at LinkedIn, LinkedIn is not just a premier networking platform. It's your digital resume. It's a comprehensive high level view of what you bring to the table. It allows you to interact with others who share similar career interests as you. And also it's an opportunity for you to um, constantly take a look back at all the great experiences that you've had that relate to your specific career goal and uh, update that as regularly as you have acquired new skill any new experiences or have gained new responsibilities. So it's really just a great way for you to present yourself to connections all over the United States and abroad. When looking at the way that your resume and your, and your LinkedIn profile work in tandem, think about how your professional story may initiate on your resume and may lead a hiring official or networking connection to your LinkedIn profile. It also may lead to opportunities for employment based off of your settings um, within your LinkedIn account. Um, are you open to work? Are recruiters aware that you are open to work if that's something that you're currently seeking? Are you adjusting your profile settings to make sure that whoever may be looking for somebody with your unique skill set is able to find you via a search? And what kinds of keywords and phrases are you, are you putting into your profile that is going to attract somebody to your profile? Whether you're looking for work or not, using LinkedIn as a, as a way, as a framework for presenting your skills to your audience is going to be a wonderful way for you to continue expanding your professional network. And that's what today's conversation is all about. Building um, your profile further and using that as a framework for building um, and uh, maintaining strong networking relationships. I have acquired a lot of different tips um, using LinkedIn to optimize your profile and how to really expand your contact network. So a couple um, things I want to share is that the tips here come from a very reputable career development platform that I regularly reference in our webinars, 
called The Muse. Um, and today's tips are specifically lifted from an article from one of the Muse career coaches, um, the 31 best LinkedIn tips for job seekers. Now, all of these tips that I've included here, um, while they do, um, uh, while this article was more geared to job seekers, this is for anybody who is looking at making and auditing a LinkedIn presence so that they are careful and considerate of information that they want anybody who is going to interact with their digital profile to know more about them and to know that this is an opportunity for yourself to look at your profile from an outside perspective and see if there's opportunities to strengthen it through these tips. The uh, tips here, we'll be able to do a deep dive in and give you a little bit more perspective on some of those through my experience in working in the, the world of career development. And I'll also be able to take any questions that you have in the chat box um, or comments that you have, I think, are also relevant if you have some additional perspective in some of these areas that we'll be unpacking today in our hour-long conversation about LinkedIn profile and networking optimization strategies. The first one is just really focusing on your LinkedIn profile as a means to tell your story and to build your own professional persona. Your LinkedIn profile does something that your resume or other application materials cannot do. It cannot go so into the weeds of who you are professionally. It doesn't, um, uh, your, your resume and your cover letter do not share. Um, so much information about who you are and your value proposition. That's where LinkedIn gives you an opportunity to share who you are professionally, what you do and why you do it. So thinking about how you can set the tone for your, for your online portfolio um, and how you are going to interact with the system through any article sharing, through your public feed, any commenting that you are um, uh, making on anybody else um, who has posted an article or any sort of tips that they may have provided through their own professional experience that's something that you're able to contribute and that's what networking is it is building and maintaining um, mutually beneficial relationships and a lot of that is going to be the exchange of thoughtful ideas based off of your professional experiences so great way for you to really frame how this is an opportunity for you to tell a story and build that personal uh, persona of yourself through the platform. Knowing who your audience is and how keywords and phrases are going to be used to grab their attention is important. If you are looking at opportunities within the higher education arena, if you're looking at opportunities within the healthcare arena, you need to be considerate of who that audience is and the kinds of language that will grab their attention. Making um, sure that your story is communicated through that perspective um, is going to take a lot of auditing and review and looking at things um, uh, regularly so that you can constantly edit and update that, that platform. It's easy for us to fail to update our network or make any sort of adjustments into the fill-in sections of our profile if we've received a new experience or a new responsibility in our current role, or maybe we forgot that we had a previous responsibility in a former role, and, and that's an opportunity then for us to see if it makes sense to add that in to our profile. It's also important for us to really focus attention on um, what information we want to go a little bit more deep into when we are articulating our responsibilities in our current and previous roles. And this also goes for volunteer positions um, and any other types of responsibilities that you've had that will be aligned to your professional goals moving forward. So think about this as not just focusing on the present, but what do you want to accomplish in the future? And your audience is going to be essential to attracting people because that's what's going to help you network your way into a future opportunity or at least 
learn about an opportunity that is aligned to your professional goals. Working keywords throughout your profile, there are fill-in sections where you're going to be able to see skills such as in the skills and competency section of your profile that employers can search for. There will be fill-in information in your headline in the summary section of your profile that will be a preview of what somebody who may find you on the front page of LinkedIn will be able to see at a glance. Those keywords are intentional um, and they're going to be a great way for you to weave them in throughout your profile. If you're someone who has a very strong communication style um, and you want to be mindful of your strengths in interpersonal verbal and written communication and how that has been an important part of your outward facing role and previous roles that you've had, then that needs to be consistent in all facets of your LinkedIn profile. It also needs to be aligned to some of the key words and phrases that you're using within your um, uh, resume and other application materials. So consistency there and using words throughout your profile and having that also displayed in other areas of your professional brand will be important for you to audit and see where there's opportunities to strengthen. A complete profile, LinkedIn does a great job of letting you know what level of completion your profile is. I believe they use some keywords like your profile's at a rock star level or very high performing le level, or there's opportunities to strengthen it in some way. They always have a good way to use um, uh, the right words to describe where your profile strength may be. When you're looking at a complete profile, it is a complete profile if you have included as much information as you can in all of the fill-in sections of the profile. And when you're doing an audit of each of the profile sections and you are in LinkedIn, you can focus on any areas that you may have already exhibited skill, experience, or have um, some expertise in that you have not yet filled in. Um, and going through that and seeing if you've not filled in something, um, is it necessary for you to um, uh, move backwards from your current position to previous experiences and see where you can strengthen some of those descriptions of your work. So it's not just focusing on a job title or a company or duration of employment, it's describing specifically what your responsibility was in a way that's going to connect with your reader. Remember, LinkedIn is about networking and it's about not only personal brand, um, uh, building and allowing your network to engage with you, but it's about attracting new connections to your profile based on the information that you're referencing. Anybody can put that they have worked at, say, Webster University or were a student at Webster University in their profile. However, if you're describing specifically what you had done while you worked at your employer um, and or what you had studied, the coursework, um, if you're putting in information from any courses completed at the university or any other credentials that you have, you're going to really build a complete profile that's going to give your reader a, an entire um, um, uh, view of who you are professionally and academically. It's only a piece of the puzzle still, right? You ultimately want to have ongoing conversations and be able to interact with the platform through uh, discussion groups and forums that LinkedIn has um, uh, and, and on any other way for you to engage with individuals through the system. So just think about the complete profile and then really the top sections should be a focus because that's what's going to grab the reader's attention first. That will include your profile section um, uh, headliner, um, the specific summary that you're going to be crafting and articulating. We'll speak a little bit more about that in a second. All of those top sections of your LinkedIn profile are going to be important for enticing a reader to engage with you further. Um, even if it's an employer that is following up to see what information you've included 
online uh, through your LinkedIn profile after you've submitted an application, make sure that there's more in-depth information about who you are professionally and what you bring to the table so that your reader is going to have more information to sort through, not just reinforcing the same information that you've highlighted in your application materials. You can customize your LinkedIn URL to be a consistent handle through any other um, uh, branding components that you've highlighted in application materials. For instance, if your email is a combination of your first and last name, um, then maybe you're using that same email handle as the customized portion of your LinkedIn URL. That means it'll give you a little bit more consistency um, and it'll be an intentional way for you to allow whoever is going to be searching for your profile if they need to go to LinkedIn and it's not been a direct link from your resume, it'll be easy for them to discover you based off of that information. So customizing that and going into your profile and editing that public URL will be a good way for you to bring consistency to other components of um, your, your technology, your tech tools. Adding an, a cover photo um, that reflects you, there can be some really cool ways for you to add personality through a cover photo that may align to your industry or maybe your company that you're currently work for. Um, has um, a, a collection of images that could be used as a backdrop for your LinkedIn profile. Um, if you click on the link that I've included in the chat box, and I'll put it in, in there again for anybody that arrived um, after the, the broadcast started, you can click on some of the links within the Adobe Spark page. And um, number seven, there is a link to some cover photos that you can um, potentially use on your LinkedIn profile. Again, looking at any way to differentiate yourself and bring attention to your profile, a cover photo is something that can reflect who you are, um, even if it's something that just infers a little bit more about your um, personality than. Um, directly aligning to your work related activities. Whatever you select, just make sure that you are um, uh, selecting an image that doesn't look distorted. And that also goes with a professional photo. Choosing a professional profile photo of yourself or even taking a new one if you're looking at your photo now and you're thinking, well, this was taken a few years ago. Maybe my hair is um, shorter or longer or um, I, it's just time to possibly update that. Maybe um, um, as you are going through your auditing um, auditing of your of your LinkedIn profile, you'll be able to make any sort of plans to make an adjustment to your LinkedIn um, profile picture as well. Be mindful of some of the filters that LinkedIn's uh, that LinkedIn will allow you to add to your public profile. You definitely don't want something that is going to look um, so off to maybe how you actually may look in person if you're going to be engaging with anybody in person. So keeping that um, in check is going to be very important for you. So looking at that and, and deciding if you know you need to make any sort of adjustments to your profile picture is, is going to be a good move to make in the auditing stage of your profile. Writing a headline that is different from your current job title is a, is a recommendation. LinkedIn will um, default either your current education um, or your current work experience, your current job title as a headline for your profile. I typically ask people to focus on their value proposition and what they do um, as a way to frame how they want their reader to be enticed and, and click on their profile and engage a little bit further. That's going to be the first thing somebody sees on your profile um, at the top if they're searching um, for, for someone with your skills, um, someone with your qualifications and your geographic location, that's going to be um, a key indicator of who you are. If you can't think creatively about um, 
how you want that to come across in a headline that is different than your current job title, that's okay. Um, it's just something that is already defaulted. And I think there are always opportunities for us to strengthen that and do better. So if you can think of something and you click on the link that I've included in the, in the chat, um, there will be some additional resources for you to think about how you can prepare a headline that differs from your current job title. Your complete introduction, um, there's an edit button when you go in to edit your profile and there's more to it than just what people will see um, at a glance. There are additional pieces of information such as the country or region that you're currently in, uh, the industry and specific contact information that you can include in your profile. In the settings, you can adjust um, on the back end who can see some of that more um, sensitive identifying information, such as if you do include a phone number on there or an email address. You can make um, your um, settings so that only so um, people who are connected with you may have access to that kind of identifying information. LinkedIn does limit you to one industry though which is sometimes uh, challenging if you're um, in a profession that spans across multiple industries so if you decide that um, you know there's one industry that you're currently working in or that best captures who you are um, professionally that's something that you need to be considerate of when you're selecting that um, because you can only select one at a time. It used to be you didn't have to select an industry at all, um, but now that's not the case. It's a mandatory um, uh, field, is that's a searchable field for recruiters. Using your summary wisely to introduce yourself and not just restating information that is highlighted within your resume profile summary is going to be the self-introduction that you would like to have um, with anybody who is potentially a new networking connection who may not know who you are this is your self-introduction this is your value proposition this is describing your impact on the work that you do so this is an opportunity for you to wow somebody um, and, and allow them to engage with you further in some way maybe they are not currently connected to you and they want to connect with you and your profile summary is aligned to um, um, entice them for a conversation or invite you in for a conversation about something um, that they're wanting to learn a little bit more about so always a good way for you to audit that um, and think about how it can be strengthened. I know that I personally am always editing and, and, and adjusting language that I use in my own summary um, and also in other areas of experience that I've included on my LinkedIn profile. And I talk to many clients and, and students at the university who have had um, uh, consistently gone in and made some adjustments after conversations we've had. So um, it's it's okay if you if you are, are like myself or others who constantly do that um, because it only just shows that you're dedicated to continuing to evolve your personal brand and make sure that it articulates who you are professionally and what you bring to the table. Showing off your ex expertise and um, you know your best work in the feature sections are going to be important because you want whoever is going to be reviewing your profile um, to know specifically your overall value proposition. And when you're showing off your work expertise, you're going to be able to differentiate yourself from others who may not be going so far in depth with what they do and how they do it. You are also going to give your reader an opportunity to learn a little bit more about your overall impact um, on the success of an organization, especially if you're using um, strong accomplishment driven descriptions and quantifying whenever possible. And I'll, I'll kind of touch on that again in just a moment and focusing really on how your reader is going to believe and, and feel that they are inspired by what you have accomplished and what you are doing. 
tailoring your experience just as you would tailor resumes and cover letters for different positions you're applying for. Your, your LinkedIn is more comprehensive, but it should still follow um, uh, and be tailored to a goal. Um, so if you notice that some of your positions may, may reinforce some skills that you're wanting to highlight as part of your professional story, but the experiences may not be clicking well with somebody who is reviewing your online profile, you have to kind of look at it through that lens and think, is this work history detailing who I am now as a professional? Maybe 10 or 15 years ago, you career shifted and your shift was into an entirely different industry the work that you've had prior to that shift, is it going to reinforce information that re resembles uh, or reflects your current or future opportunities for growth? Thinking about that and how you want it to come across is going to be very important. Remember, all experience is valuable, but it's about the energy that you're putting into some of the fill-in sections that will bring more attention and more focus to what you are currently seeking or what you're open to. Adding any links and media to those work experiences is a way for you to highlight or showcase some artifacts. Artifacts could be work samples, attachments, maybe you're focusing on activities that you have um, maybe um, uh, been responsible for that are highlighted on your company's website or their archives somewhere, somewhere on a company website that you can link to. You can describe what that artifact is. Those different media attachments can go a long way. You're not just telling somebody in the fill-in section what you are responsible for, you're showing them. And showing somebody what type of work they can expect if you are brought into their company or organization is going to go a lot further than just describing it. Um, and editing those regularly so that you're keeping some of those uh, recent is going to show people that you are maintaining um, what you want them to see and what you want them to know and how you've been able to evolve. So be intentional about what you may want to highlight. Um, don't shy away from um, highlighting too much information. Um, I, I mean, too many media attachments. I don't believe there's um, um, such a limit on what you may want to highlight. You definitely don't want to overwhelm a reader, but you definitely want to make sure that you're reinforcing information that you've already mentioned in your profile there um, through some of those media attachments. Looking at ways that you can um, uh, strengthen and make your LinkedIn and resume and other application materials more cohesive is only going to reinforce who you are and your overall personal brand. Your personal brand is everything from your physical applications that you'll be submitting to hiring officials for a job you're interested in, to your LinkedIn profile, to any other social media profiles that you have to your interviewing approach, your professional attire, the way that you're communicating via email, all of those contribute to your personal brand. But the two components that need to be very cohesive and, be, um, and represent your skills and experiences at a very high level are your resume and LinkedIn. So auditing those and looking at them in the same space is going to help you make sure that your story is a continuation potentially of what you've highlighted in your resume on your LinkedIn profile and vice versa. If you're applying for a position um, and somebody finds you via LinkedIn and they want you to apply for that job and they give you information about how to apply for it, your resume should reinforce key information that entice them um, to even reach out to you and, and let you know about the opportunity. So they remember who you are and remember um, um, that they, as a recruiter, reached out to you to apply for that position. So I was just looking at that, making sure that they're um, uh, working in tandem for your benefit is a good way to audit that through the lens of a hiring official. 
licenses, certifications, um, projects, volunteer experience, accomplishments, and our languages are ways that you can continue to fill in information as they are applicable to you. I have zero language proficiency outside of English, um, so that's not an opportunity for me to fill in that section of the profile. And that section won't even be included in my online profile because I didn't include any information in there. However, I have information that I can reference for each of these additional areas. And I recommend that if you're looking at ways to strengthen your LinkedIn profile, you're thinking about any sort of non-paid volunteer roles, um, whether it's short-term or long-term volunteer opportunities, um, it may be professional association involvement. Maybe you're serving on a committee. Maybe you are serving in an advisory role, a pro bono advisory for um, a nonprofit or a school corporation. There's always ways for you to highlight some of those because the, that experience is also valuable accomplishments and using the direct language from any recognitions you've received um, can just be a cut and paste into your LinkedIn profile and the date, um, month and date that you specifically were recognized. All of that information is important and is valuable to who you are professionally. Licenses and certifications though, and this is important too, if you are taking any say courses in LinkedIn Learning, um, you at the end of each course can add those um, uh, course completion in the form of a license or certification directly to your LinkedIn profile. So if you use LinkedIn Learning or you have access to LinkedIn Learning, that's an, an additional way for you to reinforce or diversify or expand your skill areas so that your um, uh, maintaining competency within the areas that you have um, subject matter expertise in and you want to maintain that through any sort of ongoing training um, um, with these e-learning platforms. In the education section, you can even include a listing of coursework that you've completed. Maybe it's the core coursework from some of the degree programs that you have um, already been through and earned a degree from. Um, if it's just general education courses, like if you have earned your bachelor's degree and you had to take English 101, you may not need to put English 101 there, um, but if your core course was uh, marketing fundamentals, well, marketing fundamentals is a core course that should be highlighted in your education section, as that is a credential that's going to pop up when they look at your educational background. If you have a certification, um, say from a marketing, um, a reputable marketing um, association, and that's something that you have earned and you had to take coursework in, and that credential was issued to you, that's something that you can highlight in that section of your profile as well. So thinking about where those fit best and making sure that it represents who you are professionally and it's all cohesive is going to contribute to who you are um, and what you're bringing um, um, in that hiring process if you're job seeking. Touting your skills and really giving yourself credit where credit is due. Skills in LinkedIn um, aren't the same necessarily as skills that you will highlight in your resume. Skills in LinkedIn could be anything from replies promptly to emails to teamwork to leadership and management, to those more technical skills like specific coding languages um, for those IT professionals. Maybe there are specific areas of technical skill that you have advanced proficiency in and are staples within your profession, like Excel. Maybe, you know, Lord knows I can't open Excel barely, but you know I try to figure out how to um, organize information in there. But if you're have if you have an advanced knowledge of using Microsoft Excel, include that in the skill section because it's a searchable field, and employers and recruiters can definitely use that information to get a bigger picture view of the skills that you've had um, acquired and were confident enough to include in that section of your profile. Your Networking connections can also endorse you. 
um, and recommend you based off of your skills and indicate the degree to which that skill is um, uh, the strength of that skill is and, and, and their relationship to you in, in regard to knowing about how you have exhibited um, strength in that skill area. So keeping that in mind too, and you definitely want others to endorse you for those and seeking out endorsements for those skills are going to be a part of just building reputation and being a leader in some of those areas that you're touting on your profile. Looking at recommendations, Recommendations are a valuable reinforcement to allow somebody who is not only reviewing the content that you've included in the fill-in sections of your document, of your online portfolio, but for them to have reinforced messaging from professionals who have worked with you. Um, maybe it's your current or previous supervisors, maybe it's colleagues, maybe it's clients of yours that you have worked with. Um, that information can be very valuable, especially from the hiring uh, manager's point of view and, and making sure that you're also giving them in return. Uh, when you're asking for any sort of recommendation on LinkedIn, including a personal note, when you're requesting that recommendation and also indicating in that note that you're more than happy to provide a recommendation that they can um, opt to include um, or recommend any changes to before adding to their LinkedIn profile is just a great way for you to expand um, um, how people look at you based off of what others are saying about you. Um, so. Thinking about that is always an opportunity. It's hard sometimes to, you know, hound people to get those in, um, but LinkedIn definitely does give you an opportunity to take advantage of those tools so that you can organize those to your liking. Linking uh, your LinkedIn profile URL on your resume is a strategic way to allow people to learn more about what you have to say about who you are professionally and what you bring to the table. Remember, your resume is only a summary. It's only scratching the surface of who you are and it's designed to entice the hiring official to invite you in for a conversation about your interest in the role and the company, and also um, to elaborate further on your overall fit for the position that you're being considered for. Allowing your reader to know that you have more information about who you are professionally by including a direct link of your uh, LinkedIn profile to your resume is a strategic way for you to learn if other hiring officials have stumbled across your profile because you submitted your application. But also it's a way for you to say, I have more to say. There's more to learn about who I am please visit my profile. And they likely will. They'll likely be enticed about what you bring to the table. They're likely going to learn a little bit more about what information you have to say about your professional self and what others may have said, the skills, everything that you've highlighted is going to give more than just what your resume says um, as a standalone piece of an application. Being um, very engaged um, and as an active user in LinkedIn and checking in with LinkedIn and adjusting your notification settings so that when and if someone is commenting some on an uh, article that you've shared or you have commented on something and somebody is replying to that, you can have an ongoing um, uh, engagement history that others are going to be able to see. And that's actually a profile section in your, in your LinkedIn. Um, people can see when you're connected to them, your activity snapshot. They'll know what you've liked. They'll know what you've commented on. They'll know what you've posted. They'll know if you added a new skill or made, um, uh, maybe you celebrated a work anniversary. There's always going to be ways for a user who comes to your profile to know your activity snapshot. So being active, at least checking in once, every other day 
um, so that you're not leaving a conversation high and dry. You can continue to contribute to that if you are engaging through sharing information or contributing to a conversation um, in a LinkedIn group. Requesting connections and doing it thoughtfully, there, there's, there has to be some intentionality of who you want to connect to within your contact network. Um, when you're requesting connections, you'll be able to see how you may be connected to that individual through other mutual connections. There are um, second and third division connections. Your second division connection is going to be somebody that you're not yet connected to, but somebody that you're already uh, that's already within your network is connected to them. So that is one way for you, that's your one in way to get connected to somebody and you know, be intentional. Are they within the same industry as you are? Are they sharing some of the same career interests by what information they may have highlighted in their profile? Um, is this a, a public uh, um, a page, say, um, say uh, um, Bill Gates, for instance, has more of a public um, page profile versus his personal account? Um, that you can follow and just learn about updates that Bill Gates um, posts. Company profiles um, uh, can also be a way for you to at least maintain any sort of knowledge about what's happening within your industry by following some of the industry leaders um, through those company profiles. Also wonderful ways for you to really be intentional about how you want to connect and how you want to do it thoughtfully. Don't just network, use LinkedIn to learn and grow, and there's always opportunities for you to learn more from what information is shared in the public feeds. There's ways for you to learn about and contribute to conversations and get perspective or share your perspective. That is a part of the networking exchange, but it's also part of you learning and, and evolving and sharing information as well to somebody who may be wanting to grow a little bit further. So thinking about how it could be used as a platform to learn, um, to evolve, and to spread um, uh, information maybe about programming or activities that you are hosting or coordinating through your employer that is open to the public. There's always ways for you to share that information that's aligned to your goals. It's important to not share overly sensitive or personal information. This isn't one of those platforms that we use more um, to showcase leisure activities outside of work related or professional engagement. So thinking about how you want to engage and how you want to promote learning and growth is going to be based off of your activity and what you want to, how you want to engage with the system. Start posting, everybody needs to start somewhere. Um, if you are, for instance, wanting to share information about um, a position that your team is currently hiring for, that's notifying your contact network that there's an opening that maybe someone that they are um, connected to or them themselves are interested in. And you're notifying your network of what that opportunity is. And maybe if you're inviting a conversation, if there are any referrals or any questions that somebody has that they can directly connect with you. Those are good conversation starters. It could also be maybe you're currently looking for um, guidance on how to uh, uh, identify or assist somebody identify virtual internships. Maybe you have a, a son or a daughter who's in college and they're looking at maximizing time over their extended break this coming summer and they're not going to be any classes. So you're looking at virtual internship opportunities or other forms of experiential learning, and you're wanting to post about that. Those are good conversations to be had. Maybe there's a good read that you recently found in Forbes or um, maybe something through another reputable professional um, centric career themed uh, blog site that is going to be valuable to your network and your own perspective shared on that to begin a conversation. Whatever that is, just start somewhere. Um, and, and really that's going to be a good indicator of you know, showing how engaged you are with um, your network and wanting to contribute to conversations. 
LinkedIn groups, there's so many different LinkedIn groups. Some are closed groups um, uh, that require um, an administrator to approve your participation or approve your membership. Some are strictly attached to professional associations um, where you may have to have a, a paid membership. Um, and some are just other interest groups that would be good to connect with other professionals who have similar academic and career interests that you have. Um, finding out those and looking for those and, and engaging with those is, is, is a great way to expand your network, to optimize your own um, and leverage your own knowledge um, as part of contributing to conversations within those groups. If you're in a group and you notice that there's not a whole lot of engagement, maybe that's key for you to stand out and start a conversation. Um, those are great ways for you to really, um, especially if you're job seeking, for you to really stand out in a way that's going to bring positive attention to your yourself um, and really expand your network in the process. And the last thing, um, and, and this is just reinforcing information that I had already shared is don't only be all about LinkedIn when you're job searching. LinkedIn is about relationship building and relationship building takes work and takes a lot of time to um, uh, make sure that your LinkedIn presence represents who you want um, uh, what you want others to say about you. So the way that you're engaging with LinkedIn in an ongoing basis is going to give you a bit more opportunity to stay on the radar of anybody who is, you know, looking for your guidance or your expertise in areas that are within um, some of those shared interests. So thinking about that and being as tapped into it as possible is always going to be strategic for expanding networking opportunities but also really bringing attention to your profile and being looked at as the subject matter expertise that you that you are I'm going to pause for a second um, i understand that these tips there were a lot of them as i mentioned the spark page i'll put it into the chat box again in case we had anybody join the call since i had last included that web link in the chat box. Um, there are clickable links within this presentation that you will be able to do a little bit more of a deep dive in some of those areas. And in the article that I reference, all of this is captured at the top of this section. So I'll be quiet for a second if you have any questions. I welcome those questions in the chat box. Okay, a question came in, a private question um, about first person. So um, your resume is a opportunity. Your resume is an opportunity to introduce yourself to your reader, but you're not introducing yourself using first person pronouns in your resume. You can break that rule on LinkedIn. And in your summary, for instance, you can say, I am, you know, someone who enjoys working with clients. And what I do is X, Y, and Z. You're speaking about your overall impact, your value that you bring. Um, so your LinkedIn is a little bit more of an opportunity to showcase who you are using those first person pronouns to make it more personable. Um, but your resume is typically not that format. You don't use first person communication in your, in your application materials with the exception of your cover letter if that's requested. Um, so, so good question. If you're currently job seeking um, and unemployed, should you leave um, your most recent position as listed as current? Well, 
I mean, I've seen people list as a current position, something that they may be looking for and reference back to if they're job seeking because the settings um, on your profile in the, on the back end could indicate to hiring officials without it outwardly being um, displayed if you are currently employed, employed to your to your own network that you're that you're looking for employment. So if you are looking for employment and you've not utilized LinkedIn's backend features, you can specifically include some job titles that um, you're open to or or you know some of the um, areas of experience that you want to really focus on in this upcoming job search. You can include that information in the back end and those who are using LinkedIn um, on the recruiting end will know that about you um, and they'll know to connect that information to you based off of what you've included there. I also recommend that if you're using the jobs tool within LinkedIn that um, you're looking very closely at the recommended positions. If you're looking at the recommended positions and you're thinking none of these jobs are anything that I would ever consider. Well, that's key right there, because if you're looking at it and you're saying none of these positions align to what I'm interested in, then that means that there is not enough information in your profile um, in those fill in sections for LinkedIn to use its algorithm to reflect what your interests are and what skills you have acquired so that you are seeing positions that are aligned to your to your skills and your experiences and your back and your educational background so um, that's always a good way for you to test if your linkedin uh, profile is at a high strength is if the jobs that you're being recommended for um, based off of that algorithm are showing you things that you would be qualified for if it's all over the map that's probably a good sign that you need to have a deeper um, audit of your own LinkedIn fill-in sections and fill in more information. It also gives you an opportunity when and if you apply for positions on LinkedIn, it'll let you know the skills um, as far as other job applicants, where you stand with those who use LinkedIn as a way to apply for those jobs. So for instance, it will let you know that you're in the top um, 25 percent of candidates that have applied for the position based off of these key skills that you've included in your profile those skills are likely lifted from the actual um, skills and endorsements section of your profile not necessarily catching any of the other words that you filled in in descriptors like from current or previous work experiences so really focus on those skills and if you're noticing a skills gap then go back and edit that skill section so that those um, uh, efficiencies can be made. For instance, if you're looking at, you have three of the top 10 skills that other candidates have, and you're looking at the seven maybe that you haven't highlighted in your profile, then you may need to be thinking, well, are these other skills that I've not included, are they a part of the types of jobs that I'm applying for? And are they just inferred that I have them or do I really need to be intentional about listing them in my profile? It's likely the latter. You're going to be intentional about listing those skills in your profile so that your reader knows specifically that you have acquired them you're aware of what those skills are and how they're valuable to you. Um, and also they know that you um, um, uh, aren't going to uh, assume that they're just going to make some natural inferences about the skills you may or may not have. So uh, always kind of be mindful that some natural inferences are going to happen, um, but we don't want them to do all of the thinking for us because this is our brand. This is your LinkedIn presence. So make sure that you're connecting the dots for your reader and that they don't have to dig or guess um, to know if you've acquired a specific skill through your experiences. Yeah, and you're setting the roadmap for, for 
what you want people to see. You're in charge of the content. So the more information that you emphasize and the more consistent you are with specific kill skills that are dropped in throughout your profile is only going to reinforce how those skills are part of you um, and your overall personal um, persona. Yeah, I get asked questions a lot about LinkedIn profile pictures and I, I tend to be a little finicky about the profile pictures because you know, part of what I had done and what I continue to do over the years is work with um, Miss um, uh, America contestants. Um, and um, we always talk about their professional headshots and how judges um, who will be viewing them should be able to recognize them on stage from their from their headshot there should be such a dramatic difference so the way i look at it through that perspective when i'm coaching people um, um, for those sorts of contests and and, and and competitions is similar to how a job seeker wants to look at you as well they want to know um, when and if they're going to be connecting with you via Zoom, that you resemble the person that they're speaking with. And I sometimes know that that could be challenging to maintain that sort of um, uh, consistency. If, if you know, you know, in, in previous years, I used to have much longer hair and now I just buzz my hair out of convenience. Um, that's something that I um, need to be mindful of if I have a dated picture on my profile that shows, um, you know, longer hair when, you know, my hair over the last few years is now buzzed. So thinking about that is going to give you a little bit more of a way um, uh, to make decisions about your profile picture and decide if, you know, going to a professional studio is, is a good move. I know um, my team um, uh, we work with JC Penny a lot um, for suit up events. We have one coming up in the next couple of weeks, and um, they offer incentives for participants to um, have a discounted um, session through their uh, uh, photo studio. Um, that's just one way that you can update that. They're typically very inexpensive, um, and you can typically get a pretty good rate um, uh, just to get a couple headshots taken for inclusion um, on your on your digital profiles. I do recommend, and you know, I know that like other social media platforms are, um, you know, sometimes more reserved for leisure or, you know, however you engage with with others on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, et cetera. But what I think is important is, and what I try to do is maintain consistency through all my profile pictures, especially if I'm working in a in an arena where um, part of my brand is about my um, my digital persona. Um, I want to make sure that I'm not confusing anybody if they're seeing different images on different profile pictures, or I want to be as consistent as I possibly can when putting that information into my public profiles. Wonderful questions, and I appreciate all of those. Any additional questions? I know we're up about time at um, at the end of the hour, so I um, want to give this opportunity if there are any additional questions about LinkedIn um, profile optimization and using it to really expand your network. Well, I, I do appreciate um, all of you spending part of your day with me and learning a little bit more about all of the features within LinkedIn and how to make your profile stand out and be um, elevated to a level that you really want to focus on. Um, uh, Anna, I'm not sure if you had a question still. Um, I was looking in the chat box. I noticed that, just noticed that your hand was back up. Okay, well, thank you so much everyone for participating today and I look forward to your future participation at Webster.careers events. Thank you and have a wonderful day.